Did you think it'd be possible for a complete stranger to find out where you live, where you go to school, and even what bus you ride? Well, it's 2019, and unfortunately, things like this happen every day. Most people I know have a device, whether if it's a phone or a computer, and the majority of people have a social media since it's mainly accessible to everyone. Normally, teens ages 13 through 17 have some sort of platform to chat with friends on, but not everyone is who they say they are. Some adults pretend to be a kid your age and try to contact you. This brings me to my first point. What's an online predator anyways? According to www.ipredator.co, uh, an online predator is someone who engages in child sexual abuse or worse that either begins online or takes place online. These people are normally above the age of 18 and pretend to be a kid your age. I'm sure that an adult in your life at one point has told you not to talk to strangers and don't give away your address. Those are important points, but there's more to that. You shouldn't, you shouldn't give away your actual name, any details about your school, or pictures of yourself. And don't give out phone numbers either. That could lead to disasters. That would be personal information. I have three solutions to prevent children from being sexually abused through online websites. The first solution would be to move your family computer, if you have one, to a public place in your home, such as... Uh, such as a living room. This is so that your parent can monitor what you're doing and if anyone shady is talking to you. Teens are supposed to have a bit of privacy, but the internet can be a dangerous place. In fact, according to my research, the FBI in 2018 had 424,066 entries for missing children from NCMEC 2019. Like I said earlier, the majority of people at my middle school have a phone with some sort of social media. The majority of people have Snapchat as well. On Snapchat, you can enable your location using the Snap Map. My second solution would be for social media. Don't add or friend people you don't know. If they keep trying to friend you, you could block or report them, but tell someone, like your parents or guardian. If you do friend someone on Snapchat with your location enabled, they are able to see where you are. My third solution is for parents to inform their kids on the grooming process and the dangers of social media. Not many children or parents know about the grooming process. There are multiple sources with information about the grooming process and how to report it, such as victimsofcrime.org and www.americanbar.org. The grooming process is a series of actions leading up to gaining a child's trust and involving an abusive sexual relationship. If more parents tell their children about the grooming process, they're less likely to be tricked into being groomed. Online predators are still an ongoing problem. And in my research, I found that one in five youth between the ages of 9 and 17 will, be, will view unwanted sexual material online from the Ch conversation 2018. In conclusion to my talk, allow me to summarize. An online predator is an adult trying to gain a child's trust, otherwise known as grooming, in order to engage in a sexual relationship and take advantage of a child. This is still an ongoing problem today, but I have three solutions that may help prevent children from being exploited. The first being to move your f computer or device into a public area of your home. This can help so that your parent can monitor what, who you're talking with online and if anything shady happens. My second, don't friend people you don't know. If you do, they'll probably try to talk to you and may even track your location. And my third, for parents to explain to their children the grooming process and the dangers online. This helps so that more children can be aware of online predators and why you shouldn't share personal information. Personal information includes phone numbers, addresses, emails, your school, and pictures of yourself. Remember that help is always available. You could talk to your parents, school counselors, and there are cyber tip lines that you can report incidents to. You're never alone. That concludes my talk. Stay safe online, and thank you for listening.